Sports Talk 7 and 8. We are very pleased to have with us every Tuesday at this time the manager of your Houston Astros. Back after a three-city, eight-game trip, which a very successful recap of the Mexico City coming up right now with Joe Espada. Skip, uh, did you bring us back any souvenirs from your trip to Mexico? <laughs> you know what? I actually uh, brought back two wins from Mexico, which we played really well. Very excited to... Uh, the way we played the uh, the back end of that, uh, that that road trip. That is for sure. You'll take those victories. Anything surprise you? I know the elevation issues were certainly going to be in play. This last year's games, I think, involving the Padres and the Giants had these high scoring affairs. What did you learn about playing that high elevation the last couple nights? Uh, you, you know what? You know we swung the bats really well. Obviously, you know the the the, the, the score did show that. But it, you know, but I thought our approach was was solid. Um, you know, our scoring position approach was fantastic. Something that we've been trying to address, and we did a really good job. And you know, we kept we kept this. You know, we kept them from from scoring a ton of runs. You know, last year, like you mentioned, the scores were high for both teams, but we were able to pitch. Uh, Valdez and Blanco did a fantastic job in our bullpen. You know, uh, you know. I, uh, you know, both sides of the ball, we were really, really good in Mexico. What it proved to me, Skip, was that you have a good ground ball pitcher like you especially did on Sunday. You can win in any ballpark, whether it's in no- any part of North America. One, 100%. You know, you know, regardless of the venue, when you execute and you, you pitch down in the zone and you got your sinker going, uh, um, you know, you could pitch anywhere. Uh, you've had some off days on this trip. Uh, I'm, the first couple probably were frustrating because you were coming off losses. Was there a chance to kind of get her into the scene of Mexico City a little bit, reflect on some things, and then obviously uh, with the two victories after that? I mean, so all things considered, you got a little downtime. You got a chance to reflect a little bit. And then your pitching staff is in a better spot because of the fact you haven't had a stretch of seven or eight games in a row. Right. Uh, you know, after the uh, after that uh, series in Chicago, we you know we we met as a club after that last game, and and that's exactly what we did. We we, we talked about, we reflected of the way we've been playing. We wanted to use Mexico as a little reset button. Let's go in there, and let's just you know change the way we we going about certain things, and 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 we did those things. And you know, and our job right now, our focus is to continue to do that. Let's not be complacent about the way we play Mexico. We need to carry that into this home series against two pretty pretty good teams. Astros manager Joe Espada was here on Sports Talk 790. Joey Loperfito getting the call up. Uh, Joe, uh, what is the expectations for him? What are you looking from him? What is his role? And how fast do you expect to put him in the lineup? Well, he, he's in there today. You know, we didn't bring him up here to sit him. We brought him here to, to play and for him to contribute, to contribute and also help him um, you know, establish himself as a big leaguer. You know, um, it, 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 getting up here, um, it, it takes a lot of work. And, and, and once you get here to establish yourself, we need to help him to land on his feet, put in a position for him to succeed, have a game plan for him, on, you know, understanding his role, understanding uh, how to go about things. And that's exactly what we, we're going to do with him. So he, he's in there today. We're going to put him in the outfield. That's where he's comfortable. And, and um, getting getting him going, we're excited about having him up here in the big leagues. Now, I know early in his baseball life, he was playing some first base. You had him play some first base with Sugarland this year. Uh, how would you describe his work there? And how comfortable is he if you were to ask him how his play at first base has been so far? You know what, you know, based on my conversation with coaches and what I've seen of him in the past, um, you know, he's more comfortable in the outfield, obviously. But he has played some first base where he has the foundation and he understands the areas that he needs to work on. And we're going to continue to address and get him more comfortable that first base before we put him there. Uh, but, but again, you know, his career, he's been mostly in the outfield. He does feel comfortable in all three all three outfield positions. So now it's we're just going to build him up here at first base and and kind of you know work and, and get him more comfortable and understand the 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 speed of the game at this level at the first base position. He had a lot of home runs in his first month down there. What are the intelligence reports besides the home run power? Have you heard about him and and the reason why you and Dana decided to bring him up? You know what? His pitch selection has also been been better. Um, he he did address some. Um, some areas that he, um, you know, some of, some of the swing and miss in the past, he has he has improved in those areas. Now at the major league level, um, it's for him just to understand. To he needs to do the things that got him here, and he needs to do on those. And he needs to do those things even better. 
Um, adjustments are, are made every single day. Um, that, you know, the pitching in big leagues will adjust to him the same way he needs to adjust to major league pitching. Um, so he needs just to understand his strengths and weaknesses and us help him, um, you know, become a good major league player. Can you tell us, Joe, the corresponding move you guys have made about that decision to bring him up and who you're bringing, sending down? Uh, yeah, so we are, we are talking about those things right now. Um, I, I, can't, I can't announce those right now on, on radio, but we are working through a couple of moves here to make, uh, to make uh, you know, Lo Profito available, you know, to take that spot on the major league roster. Is it just going to be one move, or do you think there could be several moves here? It could be, it's going to be one move for, for Lo Profito, for, for, that, okay. for that transaction. There's going to be two moves because we do need to make a spot on the major league roster, a 40-man roster spot. Okay. Uh, also, let me ask you about, you mentioned outfield. So how does that play into the rest of the guys that are currently out there right now? So, you know, right now, um, you know, McCormick didn't play the last game in Mexico. He is going through, uh, you know, a little sore, uh, some soreness in his hamstring. So that opens the door for um, some some playing time for Loprofito and, and, and Myers will also get, it, uh, get get some time in there also. So, um, you know, there is, there is some, there's, there's plenty of opportunities for all of them. Um, so it, it's just a matter of trying to get them all in there and trying to get him go, trying to get all of them going. Um, so we could get some production out of all of them. Uh, as far as where he is, uh, you know, I, I don't want to put too much on him. You certainly do not. But again, the numbers out of AAA were amazing. But as you know, being around this game a long time, there are going to be dramatic adjustments that are going to be made for guys that have hit the ball well in the PCLs compared to coming up to the big leagues, correct? 100%. One, you know, 100%. So, you know, my job is just to make sure that he land on his feet and not be overwhelmed. You know, there's going to be a lot of emotional um, aspect to this. You know, the just the venue, just the, the stage, it, it, it plays into um, how you perform. Um, so, you know, our job is just to make sure that you understand that we, you know, this is a, it's a long process. We, we going to make sure that we put in a position where he can have some success and, um, you know, help him out through, through, through this, through this, you know, first couple of weeks in big leagues. It, it's not easy. Um, especially, you know, the, the expectations that, that we have here in Houston, the expectations that we all put on ourselves as, as professional, you know, coaches and, and athletes. So, you know, we just got to help them out. And, and that's something that we have done in the past. And we have a group of veteran players that I'm sure that they're going to, he's going to lean on and, and, and we'll, we'll get him through this. Does this impact Jordan's playing in left field? And uh, to a bigger note question, how much do you guys discuss? Hey, I need a couple days out there. I need a DH day. Where is the conversations with you on a daily or by series basis when it comes to how much defensive work he gets? Yeah, well, so Jordan, you know, we, we, you know, we talked about it all the time, you know, because he's actually have play, he has played a really good left field for us. And, um, you know, but, you know, but so he, he will also play there and left, you know, just because La Profito is here and um, we have, uh, you know, this depth in, in the outfield right now at the major league level. But, you know, I like putting Jordan up there. Um, he does like to play left field. Also, also opens the door for, for Diaz. Uh, to DH to keep him keep his bat on uh, in, uh, in the lineup or the days that Caratini catches because you know Caratini is doing a really good job for us. Also, you know he's left he's left handed bat actually he's done a really good job. So it, it, you know playing your down in left allows to you know open up that DH spot for some other guys. And speaking of the lineup, you put Alex Bregman in the number two spot. Uh, how are you liking those returns and just your process overall in, in terms of? making the lineup as far as talking to guys, wanting to, to react to struggles or surges, but not overreact. Just if you can take us through your process. Yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, right now the, the, the Bregi um, hitting two spot is a position that he's been very successful, um, you know, for a long time. And it's just a matter of just trying to get him going. We, we need to get him on base, um, trying to, you know, the, the thought process was getting between Altuve and Jordan, and he's actually has hit really well there since he's been in the two spot. Uh, I really like the way our lineup has reacted to to that that change. Uh, but it's constant communication with those guys. You know, we're just trying a way to make this lineup be productive and be consistent, and and that they understand um, what it takes. Uh, so he's constantly, um, you know, talking to them and letting you know for them to give me feedback how they feel. And and so far, you know, our offense has been pretty good. We just got to continue to be better with running and scoring position.
couple more minutes here with Joe Espada, Astros manager with us on Sports Talk 790. Joe, when we were growing up and we were learning about baseball and constructing lineups, you said, all right, well, I'm put certain guys in certain positions to protect others. Are we using overusing that terminology now in 2024? Is there a lot of protection among guys in the lineup? Is it, or do pitchers, generally speaking, just go after each individual hitter, not worrying about who's in front or behind them? One one hundred percent. You know, they 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 they're going to go after hitters regardless of whether when you're hitting. Uh, you know, pitchers are going to pitch to their strengths. Um, you know, they they're going to attack in Altuve. You know, the same you know the same way they will attack Altuve with Jordan behind him or Brady behind him or Tucker behind him. They, it's it's the, 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 that's I don't think those those days those conversation has has gone away. Um, Pitchers are going to go after hitters' weaknesses, and if they don't execute, hitters are going to hit and drive the ball. Um, so you try to make a, a lineup in which can continue to to work and move and that passing the baton mentality where everyone is getting quality at bats after quality at bats, and that's what you know you try to do. But um, sandwiching in between someone can help. Um, you know, does it give hitters confidence? 100%. I think that's where it really makes the most impact. Hitters do like to know coming to the ballpark where they're at, where they're going to hit, and um, that's one aspect of line on construction that it really does matter. All right, to wrap things up, you mentioned the McCormick situation. Is that something you're going to walk the ballpark today to get an immediate update, or do you think this is something of just a day-to-day situation? It's a, it's a day-to-day situation, you know, uh, but, you know, he did, de- he was dealing with this early in the season, and, and we want to make sure that Mac feels feels good. We want, we don't want this to continue to linger. Um, we want this to go away so he can be the uh, productive players that we've seen here in years past. Lastly, Araghetti turned the corner a little bit after that rough first inning against Chicago, and I'm looking forward to seeing him develop, and you said as much after the game the other night against the Cubs. I hope you say some of the same things about Hunter Brown. I like for him to get longer in games and and get out of some of those early inning jams. I want you know I agree and you know it, it, it's not the lack of stuff. It, it's it's just more execution and, and we know Matt he's got electric stuff. It's, it's it's getting him to you know pitch with confidence, throw strikes, put guys away, be efficient. You know once you get a hitter ahead of the count, put him away. Um, and we know he's capable of doing that. He's done it in the past. We just need to get over the hump. And today will be a today will be a, good, a really good challenge for him to uh, show us what he's capable of doing. Skip, thank you for the time. As always, I'll be out there on Thursday, and we wish you the best of luck at this uh, Cleveland team. Much better uh, than people thought. Very competitive at AL Central so far. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, they're super athletic. They got some weapons. Uh, they can. You know, they, they put the ball in play. They got some speed and power up there in the middle. Uh, we know how good Ramirez um, is. And, you know, Josh Naylor is having a terrific season. So, um, yeah, we've got a pretty good challenge ahead of us. But, you know, we like the way we play, and we, we'll be ready to go. Appreciate the visit as always. Thanks again, Joe. All right, guys. Take care. You got it. Joe Spada, Astros manager with us here at 1244 on Sports Talk 790. So, Jory Loprofito, no surprise, going to see a lot of playing time in the outfield. And you know what the one thing, we'll talk about this come back. Maybe it's not as easy as everybody wants to make it believe playing first base. We have a couple of examples of that on this roster right now. Because there's been a player that people have said, ah, oh, put him at first base for years. Uh, you could be talking about a number of guys. Yordan Correct. Alvarez, Correct. Yanyer Diaz. Correct. Uh, we'll discuss Marissa more of that. Dubon. Coming back next. <laughs> 1245 on Sports Talk 790.